IBM Tivoli Flash Copy Manager. The first step is we will call our installer. So we will install the product right from here. The installer is a Java application and we can simply click on OK here after selecting the language and the installer will guide us through the installation of the product. After a quick introduction, we accept the uh, license agreements. Here we can select uh, which version we want to install. So we support uh, DB2, we support Oracle, and we support um, SAP on either one. We select DB2 here. And then we can select the installation path, which is to accept the default. We get a quick summary, so we see the installation folder, we, we see the component that we have selected, and we can see the disk space requirements or the disk space information. Now we simply click on install, and the product will automatically be installed for us. The installer does not include the configuration. The configuration will be done in the next step where we also have a guided wizard that will take you through the configuration. So all the installation files will be uh, laid out. We also support uninstall operations. So you can also uninstall the product right from here. The system will now go out and query all the DB2 instances which are running on our system. So as you can see, we have a couple of DB2 instances here and we can now select the first one which is our production DB2 instance and this is what we want to install Flash Copy Manager on. We simply select the instance and we click on next and then we get a different installation directory which we can see here and we accept this and clicked on next and we have seen that the result was successful we get a cu couple of um, uh, hints here we click next and that was the installation Okay, now let's move on and try to do the configuration. Okay, let's proceed to the next step, which is the configuration. For the configuration, we have a setup wizard. You start this wizard simply by executing a setup underscore db2 uh, dot shell in our case. And the configuration wizard will automatically come up. The first choice you have is you can select whether you want to install uh, Flash Copy Manager on the production system or whether you want to store it on the backup system. In our case, we want to install it on the production system only. So we enter yes. Then we can accept the default for the profile. So the profile will be stored in our case in DB2 X95 ACS and we can also automatically create this directory. We can also specify whether we want to run for SAP or not. So in our case we have an, a DB2 instance which does carry an SAP system. So in this case we just have to uh, enter yes and that means that it we indicate that we do um, run DB2 with SAP. Then uh, the next step is where we specify um, offloaded backups to the Tivoli Storage Manager. This is where you specify whether you want to run Flash Copy Manager standalone or whether you want to include the optional support for Tivoli Storage Manager. In our case, we want to say no here because we want to show Flash Copy Manager standalone. The next step is where we create uh, the, the profile. 
and we accept the default here, then we can also uh, accept the default for the host name and, and the port. In our case, we do select a, a different a port and that is also automatically being checked and in the next step we can um, disable tracing basically. Next step is where we specify the path to the repository directory. This is where we keep the metadata. So we keep metadata for each of those snapshots in a directory so that we can select and restore specific snapshots. So we accept the default here. We can also enable support for the administration assistant which we don't want to do in this case. The administration assistant is a graphical user interface which allows us to monitor, configure and report on a Flash Copy Manager for AIX. So the prefix for the volume names is specifiable here. We just accept the default. Then we also accept the defaults for the client section basically. We want to have one instance and we can specify the maximum number of snapshots versions which we want to keep. We can accept default here as well, adaptive. We can enter um, configuration whether we want to freeze the file system. We accept the default. There are also some other features that we have built in the product, which we basically accept here, all the defaults. Timeouts, device class. And here is a very important section. Here is where we configure which disk system or disk subsystem we want to use. In our case here, we want to use XIV. So the product does support DS6. 6000, DS8000, SVC, and XIV, and also the old charts. We select XIV here, and we specify the storage ID of the referred cluster. We can just let the product automatically um, figure out what we need here. And here we specify in the next step the file path to the um, XIV command line. So we just specify the command line here, the path to it, and we need the host name of the XIV system. In our case, that's called Nextra. We have to specify this. We then specify the user and the password in order to access the XIV disk system. accept defaults for the reconciliation also the grace period to retain snapshots we we use um, writable snapshots we use consistency groups and that's what we don't need there is a host name of a backup host we don't need this in our configuration here and that's basically it for the configuration for the XIV uh, disk system. We still have to enter the password. Now password is automatically being uh, verified. And that went through successfully. So we can now define whether we want to run in a high availability environment. We don't want to do this here. We could also uh, use uh, the backup system using um, Open Secure Shell, which we don't want to do here because we don't have a backup system in this configuration. And that was basically it. As you can see, the product can be installed very, very easily and the configuration is also very intuitive and you don't have to be a storage expert to configure this product. It can be done, as I've showed in this example, 
in a couple of minutes. Now we'll start a backup. That way we can see if our installation and configuration was successful. We do, we do this simply by typing the, the backup uh, db command. We use a snapshot here. And the backup has been started. It can be started by a simple command. And we can actually see the output of the program as it runs right here. Let's have a look. And we can see that the process started. The connection has been established. We do not back up the snapshot into Tivoli Storage Manager. So we use Flash Copy Manager standalone here. We ha have started to communicate with the um, XIV box in our case. We have uh, found the file system, the file systems. And we can see that the snapshot returned with zero uh, with a return code of zero. So the snapshot went through successfully. So now we have a snapshot of our SAP DB2 database available. As a next step, we do a verify. So we check if our snapshot is consistent. Okay, so we see the response here. Return code zero, so the verify was okay. We can see that the whole operation was successful and we can see that the whole process took only one minute and 25 seconds. Okay, so our backup was successful. Now let's do a query. So we wanna see now which snapshots are available for restore. A flash copy manager does contain a an operation which allows us to show all the snapshots that we have and to select them and to perform a restore. So in our case we can see that we have one. So the one that we have is a DB2. We can see um, the uh, a, a timestamp and we can see on which host this has been taken and actually now we can perform a restore. If we would have done more than one snapshot we could have select the snapshot right from here from the command line. So since we have only one we select this one. This is also just one simple command which we fire up now. Of course, we get a message that the database files will be deleted. Those are the production database files. So we're now overriding our current production with the snapshot. In this example, the snapshot is being held in the XIV disk system and it's not being transported into TSM. This is an option to Flash Copy Manager that you can enable Tivoli Storage Manager and in this case, you would not only have the snapshots on disk, you would also have snapshots which are transported into TSM, which means they are available on tape, and they are available for long-term data retention in this case. So the restore is still going, and it finished now. So the database restore command completed successfully, and that's all you really have to do in order to perform a successful restore with Flash Copy Manager.